Hey everyone, I got a couple quality of life updates on my Blender Godot pipeline add-on that should make it easier to use. I made these updates because I regularly use the add-on myself and I saw a few ways to improve it. The first is that we are now featured on the Godot asset library. So this basically means for the Godot side of things, you can just jump right into your game engine, go to the asset lib, search for the Blender Godot pipeline add-on, download it, and you're good to go. This means that there's a standard path to the import scripts, so you don't have to mess around with that anymore. Um, basically, all you have to do is connect your models to the GLTF import script, which will be a part of that add-on. The second is that I've added a new export option, which makes it much easier to export multiple models from a single Blender scene. The final thing I did is that I kind of completely reworked the collision logic from the exporter into Godot. The update makes it a lot better. The logic is cleaner and there's a lot more you can do with it. I might do another follow-up video uh, sometime on that so I can show you all the different permutations of how you can work with the objects. So like I said, I don't wanna do a super deep dive tutorial today, but I do wanna show that I actually do use this add-on myself. And as you build up the concepts and the different features, you can get some pretty complex um, behavior. So in this case, I have a couple of different objects here. And so the first one here I'll show on the left, let me reset these animation players, right? So I have the, the bin itself, which is on the bottom, and then this lid of this garbage can thing and then the, the lid on the right, sorry, I hit play there. But the way I'm achieving this is because of the update in my add-on, I have the same objects in Blender, right? And so, like I said, I won't go into excruciating detail about how they're set up. Really, it's just the same things I've talked about in the earlier videos where you can have these really simple collision shapes, whether you're using like the solidify modifier or the shrink wrap modifier, you can get really accurate and cheap collision shapes um, and I set them up right here in Blender. But the newest feature is that I have this use object name suffix checkbox here at the bottom. And really what that does is allows me to model completely separate pieces and have different GLTF exports. So if I make any changes to this, um, you know, to this model here, not to say I would wanna like stretch it like that or whatever, but let's say I made a change. Because I have this object name suffix checked, if I click the bin and hit export in Godot, the only thing that updates is the bin file, the underscore bin. So it takes the name of the object. Same thing if I wanted to update like the left lid, I would click on the lid left object, export for Godot, and then this one updates. So it just allows me to model things a little bit separately and not have it all come in as one big import. And it's just one click, right? So I don't really have to do anything else in here. I have that whole um, parent structure, you know, relationship created where, you know, things are moving and rotating properly. The other big reason I did this is because I have these two lid pieces, lid left and lid right, and they actually share an animation. So inside Blender, this animation uh, moves them both at the same time. But a really simple way to get around this in Godot is export them separately, right? So in the game engine, I have lid left and lid right. And if you pop those open, you'll see I have an animation player on each of them, right? So that animation, it's just its just easier to control that way. And it moves the collision as well as the, the mesh itself. I also have these little highlight objects, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, so that's also part of my uh, import here because the highlight object that I have, if I click it here, you'll see that I have the material set through, uh, through my add-on. So there's a lot that you can do just by kind of setting it once and then kind of iterate on your design and update it, and then just hit the export buttons to bring it back into the engine. It allowed me to do a whole bunch of things. Like I said, I split up the animation, but also I was able to reuse scripts in, in Godot because the structure of the lid left and the lid right are so similar. These two little area 3Ds, which you'll see in a sec, are like activation regions. They actually run the same script um, because it's so, it's so uniform. So let me just jump in the game and I'll show you what this looks like. All right, so I have this super simple game that I'm working on here with uh, this little guy with his track and some boxes. And I've got the collision shapes showing just so I can actually show you um, what's happening, the collision debug. And this little area here, when I enter it, basically it's gonna highlight um, that region. If I press F, then it opens the animation. But 
what I kind of want to show is that like this is a functional animation, right? If I if it's closed and I jump up here, like I can't move through it. But when it's open, I will be able to. I'll be able to jump in here. I might get stuck actually because it's kind of narrow. But if I open the second one as well, you can see, right? This is a real physical like space that I, that I can enter, and it's really simple and really cheap to to you know calculate. Um, the point of this is that I wanted to grab these boxes and be able to kind of drop them in uh, and have them fall in a funny way or use the physics like, you know, if it falls kind of on an angle, it kind of hits the, the edge and falls in. So anyways, that's a real small demo, but kind of just showing you how you can use the add-on and build up the concepts to do, uh, do some interesting stuff with. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. And for everybody who has the update, please go get the Godot add-on and that will make your lives easier. I'm also going to regularly ship updates to the asset library. So um, just stay posted for that as well. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.